Today we will take a look at the anterior abdominal wall. This is the anterior abdominal wall. It extends from the siphoid process and the costal margin above to the iliac crest, inguinal ligament and the pubic bone below. Even though it is called anterior abdominal wall, it is actually an anterolateral abdominal wall covering the abdomen in front and on sides. Posteriorly, it is continuous with the posterior abdominal wall and the back muscles. If I remove the skin of the anterior abdominal wall now with its, with its underlying connective tissues, you can identify the skin and the subcutaneous tissues here. This is the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen and here it is the fatty layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen, superficial to the membranous layer. When the skin and the subcutaneous tissue is removed, you can see the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall with their flat tendons which are called aponeurosis. Here you can see the external oblique muscle with its fibers directed downwards and forwards. If I cut and reflect the external oblique muscle, you can see the internal oblique muscle underneath that. Its fibers are directed upwards and forwards at right angles to the fibers of the external oblique muscle. Underneath the internal oblique muscle, you can see the transversus abdominis muscle with its fibers directed transversely. As you can see here, the flat tendons or aponeurosis of these muscles, they fuse with each other lateral to a medially placed muscle which is called rectus abdominis muscle. So this is the rectus abdominis muscle. On this side, this is the rectus abdominis muscle. Lateral to the rectus abdominis muscle, these aponeurosis fuse and that line of fusion is called linea semilunaris. If you extend it upwards, it meets the costal margin at the tip of the ninth costal cartilage which is called Murphy's point. These aponeurosis, after fusing lateral to the rectus abdominis muscle at linea semilunaris, splits again to form two sheets. One is the anterior rectus sheath which lies anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle and the other layer is called the posterior rectus sheath which lies posterior to the rectus abdominis muscle. You can see here there are tendinous intersections in the posterior abdomin, uh, the, the rectus abdominis muscle which are attached to the anterior rectus sheath. To show you the posterior rectus sheath, I have to remove the anterior rectus sheath and the rectus abdominis muscle. Here I have cut the anterior rectus sheath transversely below the umbilicus to open the rectus sheath. Here you can see the lower part of the rectus abdominis muscle. If I reflect that, now you can see the posterior rectus sheath the lower limit of the posterior rectus sheath here. This posterior rectus sheath continues upwards behind the rectus abdominis muscle. Here, this is called arcuate line. That is the lower limit of the rectus, uh, posterior rectus sheath. Below that, there is no posterior rectus sheath. Here, 
you get transversalis fascia. Superficial to underlying extraperitoneal fat and parietal layer of peritoneum. The rectus abdominis muscle below the arcuate line rests on transversalis fascia. This is inferior epigastric vessels which lies between the rectus abdominis muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. The aponeurosis from two sides, left and right sides, fuse in the midline and form another connective tissue band which is called linea alba. All lateral abdominal muscles and the aponeurosis are attached to the linea alba in the center. The lower free border of the external oblique aponeurosis which I have cut and open here forms the inguinal ligament. So this is the inguinal ligament which is attached between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle here. When I cut and open up the external oblique aponeurosis here, I, I enter the inguinal canal. This is called inguinal canal. This is a female cadaver you can see the round ligament that lies inside the inguinal canal. Passing from the deep ring of the inguinal canal to its superficial ring, which is somewhere here. Superficial ring is somewhere here. 